Okay, so, welcome. Are you pretty excited? Yeah, you don't know yet. <laughs> okay. So, uh, some of you have seen the video, the tutorial, um, but not everybody, so that's okay. Uh, this quiz that I'm going to give you is primarily on safety off ice here. And then we'll go out on ice and, and talk about the game for about half, about 30 minutes. And right after that, you'll be playing games. Like professionals on TV. Except okay. without the professional. Except for, yes, without the professional, without the TV, yeah. and all their without experience. The and, and, yes, yeah. and the benefit of their practicing every day, day after day yeah. after day. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, everybody's helmets, or at least youth, uh, say 10 and under for sure have helmets. We're good with that? Okay, excellent. Uh, we've got indoor shoes that have a pretty good rubber sole, we believe. Yeah, okay. Good. We're gonna find out. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, the very first thing I would like to do is tell you a story about my son. Uh, my son's name is Jared, and he's embarrassed that I talk about him, but it's a really good example. Uh, and it actually, it's, it's an event that happened here last year. Uh, and this is intended to scare anybody. Okay. Like really scary, beyond Halloween scary. Can you handle it? Okay. And then after that I'll reassure you and we'll go out there and it'll all be okay. But this story is about my son who I think is just a great kid, okay? As all of your parents think of you and all that. Uh, he, the other team was throwing their rock. He was trying to draw a rock into the rings, okay? Their, their sweepers were sweeping, but it was going to be short. And he was inspired to help them sweep, to help them make their shot. This is the other team's help. So he starts sweeping, and other people around start noticing, and they start cheering him on. So he's getting some adrenaline going. He's feeling, you know, he's, there's this cheering on and stuff. And then once he's done, he's got to get back here to sweep his own team's rock. So he thinks he's in a hurry, and he runs. Okay? He ran most of the way down the ice and right around the blue line, he went to stop, to slow himself down. And when you're running, you can get yourself going on ice, but when you want to slow down, you need a little bit of friction there to, to, that your feet can catch on that'll slow you down. And he made that slow down motion and his feet didn't stop. And his feet went straight out and I was back in the corner over there. And I could see, unfortunately this is one of the things you, you see is gonna happen. His feet go up, and he's flat in the air about there, and he goes like that on the ice. And it was bad. Um, we saw it, his shoulders hit, his head hit on the ice. Um, we covered him in blankets and called napkins. Now, he was okay. It turned out, you know, he was fine. They did the medical of him, and he was okay. But that's, that's not something you want to have happen, okay? so. The very first and most important question is how fast can you run? You can't. Don't run, please. Okay. Um, even even uh, you'll you'll start you'll get comfortable on the ice and you'll start like shuffling your feet really fast and sliding a bit and stuff. Even kind of avoid that. Uh, once you have a year or two of experience behind you, you you'll feel more comfortable. But we sure like it that we just we do our walking. Okay. All right. And the, Another thing along that lines is, believe it or not, last year as well, I fell <laughs> out there. And uh, this was a different scenario. I want to share it with you so that you can learn from it too. I was, uh, our kids were playing, and I wasn't going to be going out on the ice. I ended up being asked to go out and was more than happy to do so. I didn't have my shoes, I borrowed a pair of shoes. Went out there, I didn't have my broom with me, and that's the key thing, I didn't have a broom. And what happened is I was helping uh, some young curlers practice their throw, and two rocks hit each other, or one rock came, no, two, sorry, two rocks came, and they went off to the sides quite quickly. And we try and protect the rink. So we didn't want the rocks to hit the boards really hard. And it was coming like this, and I didn't have a broom, so I'm going, well, I'm gonna get that one. No. I'm going to get that one, and in those mov movements, and then the rock hit my foot, the next thing I know, I'm on my back, and same thing, hit my head, that wasn't good either. So, 
what you learn from, what I really learned from that is always have a broom in your hand. Yeah. Now, if you're throwing, you're going to have a stick in your hand, but a broom is really helpful for for a couple of reasons. One is it actually is a weight; it, it makes you more stable. The other is if you're losing your balance, the broom goes down, and you know, you've got three points on the ice. And if a rock is coming, you slow it down with the broom. Please don't slow it down with your foot. Because as soon as you do that, you go from two, two points of friction on the ice to one, and we don't spend a lot of time balancing like this anyways, but you go to one, and you're preparing yourself to get hit and, and, and flung around, okay? So please have a broom in your hand and stop the rocks with the broom. And I know that for those of you that saw the video, uh, the two presenters were actually moving rocks around with their feet and I never caught it uh, when we were recording it, but they have years and years of experience and they're very comfortable on the ice. So don't learn from that part of the video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, let me just cover a few more things that we want to talk about. Uh, so the dividers, there's dividers between each of the rings, okay? These dividers, Especially from the bench this way, they're, they're uh, uh, I don't know, if it's not a fiberglass, but a kind of a plastic material. They can be slippery. Uh, and even if it's not this club, and it was, those were wood dividers, what can happen is, if, if you look at the ice, you see it's kind of bubbly or bumpy. They, what they do is they put, that's called pebble. And so they walk around, they walk down the ice with this big water jug and kind of a flower sprinkler type of a thing. And they walk back like this and they put, they sprinkle all these uh, water droplets onto the ice, which become pebble. That water goes onto those dividers. So now there's actually ice on those dividers and you don't realize it. So if you go to step on it or, or something, you can slip. The other thing is it's just not good for those dividers to keep them in good shape, okay? Um, and these are all pretty much about slipping, falling, or <laughs> okay? Another thing that can happen is uh, you know, we haven't curled yet, but uh, we'll have rocks in the house and we'll have rocks that maybe come through, okay, or that'll be out of play. So the tenant, so we, we move them into behind the rings into the area that's out of play, but we don't want to leave them out in the middle. And the reason is you have a person standing in the rings called the skip who's watching the game. And if they're looking and they start to back up because they're trying to see differently, if there's a rock there, they fall over. Okay, so always take the rocks and move them off to the side like we see them right now. Um, now we're throwing what we call two-thirds sheet length for the, we're not throwing the full length, okay? So we take the rocks and we move them just, just past the benches and throw from there. Uh, when we move the rocks, don't throw them there, push them and keep them under control because there will be some people in front of you. And if they're walking along and a rock comes, you can wipe them out. So we want to keep control of the rock, okay? Oh, brooms. So, the, the, the right way to hold a broom is, well, I think a good way, I don't know that I'm not the expert on the right way, but a good way to hold the broom is straight up and down, maybe with it on your toe or just holding it like that. Uh, not a good way is to hold it like this. You can imagine somebody can come and, and catch it, or you can get excited and turn and make sure I won't hit you here, but you know, knock somebody. So, and as one lady, young lady who we were starting this program with yesterday said, you could hit somebody in the head. <laughs> and exactly, right? So we don't want to do that. Okay. Um, and then I have a reminder here, do not run, do not run, do not run. You got that? Okay. Uh, give me a stick, put feet on the eyes. Okay, and uh, when we go out on the ice, we're going to use, just like we had a boot boy at the front doors to clean our shoes, and the purpose of that is to keep mud out of here, but also we're walking around now in our indoor shoes, and if we, if this is dirty, well our indoor shoes will pick up dirt, and that's not good. Then when we go out, I think they are here. Is there no boot boys on the ice? No? no? Okay. So some clubs have them in both places, and then that, when you're going out on the ice, you may use them there. Here. Uh, and actually, you know, they vacuum this up on a regular basis and stuff, so I understand. But uh, let's keep our shoes clean from the entrance then anyways. And uh, actually, I noticed there's a big thing on the chalkboard there. 
that says, please don't sit, kneel, or put your hands on the ice. And the reason is, when you put your hand on the ice, your hand gets cold. Well, what's happening is heat is leaving your hand and going into the ice and melting that pebble. And that pebble is what makes the rock go down the ice nicely, makes it curl for us as we want, and stuff like that, okay? And uh, the, the last thing, and a really important thing, is the hacks. So at the end of each sheet, there's two rubber foot positions with a board connecting them. We don't want a rock to come down the ice, hit the hack, excuse me, damage it, because one of two things happen is those hacks are very expensive, uh, and so we don't want the club to have an expense. That, and uh, the other is, even if the hack isn't damaged, but it's, it's somewhat wrecked, then the, the facilities people have to spend a fair amount of time repositioning those hacks again. Uh, they have to melt all the ice around it, get the position, put ice in again. And we just, let's just protect the hack. Now, all of these things, though, are not at the expense of your own safety. And why I say that is we actually did, uh, about three weeks ago or so when we started at another club, uh, there was a young guy who realized after he, he was pushing a rock back and he gave it a bit of a push and it, it came at the backboard really faster than it should have been. And he realized it and he went to run to stop it. And of course, as soon as he, his, he went to stop, his feet went out and under and he slid it to that board. So again, uh, Let's protect, protect the facility, but not at the expense of your safety. Okay. And uh, yeah, any other questions on this, the whole safety spin? No. Okay. Now let's go out and uh, have some fun. The no, we're gonna have fun, and I think the first half hour is fun because I get to talk and you look at me and I feel special. Uh, <laughs> but and then right at right at about 30, the 30 mark, minute mark, you will in fact start playing games. But and it's nice if you're all on one side because if you're on both sides. You hear this half, and then you don't hear that half, you know, that kind of thing. So we could all stand on that side. When you go out, step onto the sheet one foot at a time, nice and comfortably, and just kind of walk around a little bit and get used to walking on the ice. Okay? Okay. And so uh, what we're going to take out these sticks. Each, what, how we'll do it is each team will each, you'll have one stick, and the other players will have a broom. Each of them will have a broom. When you take turns playing, you, you just transfer the stick and the group, or you, you trade off. Okay? Hey, how's it going? Is your helmet is nice and Almost. Oh, so yours is better? Okay. <laughs>